let me start uh, with this um, actual the experiment, the first experiment on fractional quantum Hall effect. In fact, this sh probably should have been uh, done earlier uh, as we have began with uh, fractional quantum Hall effect. Uh, but however, I wanted to uh, introduce the formalism and the Laughlin states, etc. Uh, earlier. So, uh, just to uh, let you know that uh, there are uh, these three people who have uh, written this uh, physical review letters in 82, Sui, Stormer and Gossard. Uh, in fact, two of them got a Nobel Prize along with uh, Bob Laughlin whose uh, picture appears below. So, uh, this said that the abstract it said that a quantized Hall plateau at uh, h over uh, e square multiplied by 3 is accompanied with a minimum in uh, rho xx uh, was observed at a uh, small temperature t less than 5 Kelvin in the magneto transport of uh, very high mobility uh, two dimensional electron gas when the lowest energy spin polarized Landau level is one third filled. So, this was the first observation of uh, fractionally quantized uh, Hall plateaus. Uh, the formation of Wigner solid or charge density wave with triangular symmetry is suggested as possible explanation. We uh, will not go into this last line in details, though we will uh, touch upon the nature of the, uh, the quantum Hall fluid. This was uh, as you see that there are three people on the right, this is uh, Dan Sui, followed by in the middle uh, Robert Laughlin and then uh, Stormer who is on the left. And, um, uh, the citation said that uh, for the discovery of a new form of quantum fluid with fractionally charged excitations and uh, this known to physicists as the fractional uh, quantum Hall effect. Okay. So, uh, going to the, the actual experimental data, uh, you see the Hall plateaus, the Hall plateaus these are showing some uh, the quantization of the Hall plateaus and uh, uh, they are seen at integer values 4, 3, 2, 1. And then there are other uh, fractional feelings such as two third, half, one third, and one fourth. And you see that the temperature is low, uh, down to about uh, less than half a Kelvin, which 0.48 Kelvin. And the corresponding magnitude resistivities are being measured. Very importantly, uh, these are high quality or rather high mobility samples. And the samples are, you know, uh, sort of uh, gallium arsenide and um, aluminium uh, gallium arsenide, these um, heterojunctions. Uh, if you read uh, that paper which I had shown, uh, this uh, physical review letters has information about the experimental details and the kind of samples being used. And um, uh, this is uh, the magnetic field is uh, coated in kilo gauss, but it is about uh, if you convert it into tesla, it is about 22 tesla that they have gone to. And um, uh, the mobilities are uh, of the order of 10 to the power 5 uh, centimeters per volt second. Uh, so, these are very large mobility samples. And um, as you see that uh, the, the temperature is also very low. The main thing is that these are cleaner samples with larger mobility where uh, the really the interaction effects become dominant as compared to the disorder effects and that is what has created or rather given rise to these uh, fractionally quantized plateaus. Okay. So, let me uh, very quickly uh, visit the lowest Landau level and uh, the properties will uh, probably come back to it uh, again. and uh, mostly in literature it is written as uh, LLL and this uh, is of course, goes with a quantum number which we have discussed number of times which uh, represents the, the quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number and uh, this uh, actually the unnormalized wave function that goes as z to the power m and exponential minus z square by 4 L b square, where L b is the magnetic length that we have talked about and z is uh, x minus i y. Okay. And uh, so, these uh, states are uh, located uh, within a radius uh, which is given by uh, L b into root over 2 m. Please keep in mind that this m is not mass, but it is the angular momentum quantum number and the largest value of m 
that for which you know all the states will fall inside uh, of a radius r uh, is given by this m is equal to some r square that is by 2 l b squared. So, that is like the m max the maximum value of m and uh, we have seen that and we have uh, sort of came to a conclusion that this really uh, gives rise to a filling fraction uh, which is 1 over m and these m is equal to odd integers which are like 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, the numerator here for the Laughlin states is equal to 1, but in practice uh, we have seen other numerators as well uh, like uh, as you saw that there are 2 third and so on, there are 3 fifth and so on, but uh, these are uh, by and large these uh, properties of the lowest Landau level. We will come back to this again, we talk about the nature of the quantum uh, Hall fluid. Uh, this uh, z is, uh, is called as a Jastrow factor and it tries to keep the electrons away and uh, it is uh, you know uh, multiplied by a Gaussian which you see there is exponential minus z square by 4 lb square uh, which are the properties of the harmonic oscillator wave function. Okay. So, uh, there is something that we have seen. Uh, so, let me sort of uh, try to explain that why uh, Laughlin states are good for understanding the fractional quantum Hall effect, how does it you know give rise to uh, fractionally quantized plateaus and, and so on. And um, <coughs> this is a slightly tricky explanation, so listen to me carefully. So, we will uh, rerun the Corbino disk argument. And just to remind you that uh, it is uh, this is like a, a disk okay. and uh, so there is this and it encloses a sort of uh, an opening in the middle through which a magnetic flux is thread by uh, putting a magnetic field. Uh, this is where the electron gas stays and uh, the temperature is assumed to be low because uh, we want the coherence of the wave function to stay that is uh, the electronic uh, wave function has a particular uh, you know amplitude and a phase. So, the phase part is important and it should be phase coherent. Um, so, uh, this is the geometry that is called as a Corbino disk and what happens is that uh, uh, which we have done earlier in the context of integer quantum Hall effect that uh, the uh, magnetic field is uh, ramped up uh, that is increased uh, as um, you know the, uh, the flux uh, the, that is threading uh, these uh, geometry increases from uh, I mean 0 to phi 0 and then to 2 phi 0 and so on uh, where phi 0 just uh, is equal to h over e which are fundamental constants. Okay. So, as uh, it is ramped up from 0 to phi 0 and uh, then what happens is that an electron is actually, so there is an electron that is transported from the inner edge to the outer edge and um, uh, the only conductivity or the resistivity that the system has is the Hall resistivity and uh, this Hall resistivity is seen to be quantized as h over uh, e square and there is a 1 over n there and this n is an integer for the integer quantum Hall effect. And uh, when we say that an electron is transferred from uh, a sort of circumference to the outer one, uh, when the phi 0 increases from phi 0 to 2 phi 0 that is the flux increases from phi 0 to 2 phi 0, then there are 2 electrons being transported from the inner circumference to the outer one and so on. So, there are 1 electrons being transported, 2 electrons, 3 electrons and so on. So, this Corbino disk uh, according to Laughlin was seen as a quantum pump okay. and um, this is how uh, integer quantum Hall effect was nicely explained. Uh, though of course, uh, the argument that we talk about is uh, depends on this uh, radial geometry or this uh, disk geometry. However, uh, we could understand that this is really the quantization is very nicely explained by this uh, motion of electrons uh, or the transport of electrons from the inner edge to the outer edge. 
Now, what happens when um, one has a fractionally quantized plateaus? Does it mean that E by 3 is uh, transported? Uh, that is certainly not true because uh, electronic charge is known to be indivisible. Okay. So, uh, that cannot happen. So, we have to understand it uh, better. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, this uh, understanding can be achieved if we uh, ask ourselves this question uh, that um, uh, what happens to the Laughlin wave function uh, as a flux quantum is threaded through the Corbino disk geometry. So, how does the Laughlin wave function or the Laughlin state changes and uh, so if you remember the, the coefficient of the, uh, the Gaussian is in the Laughlin state. of the Gaussian is uh, z to the power m, z is the complex coordinate. Okay. So, as the flux quantum changes, uh, m goes to m plus 1. Okay. So, uh, this tells you that if uh, m goes to m plus 1, uh, then the, the maximum power of z i that is this z i corresponds to uh, individual electrons. The index i runs from 1 to n. So, uh, the maximum power of z i z i increases um, the m max uh, from n m to n m plus 1. Okay? So, because quantum number m changes, so uh, the total angular momentum quantum number uh, the m max would change from n m to n m plus 1. So, that tells you that uh, if you need to incorporate it in the Laughlin wave function, then the new Laughlin wave function corresponding to this m plus 1 flux quanta is given by some uh, this i equal to 1 to uh, n. So, uh, and then the uh, z i and so this is the extra factor and then it is a psi m the old wave function and then z 1 z 2 all the way till z n that is the wave function that we had for m quantum m flux quantum. Okay. Uh, so, you need to take into account all these z i's corresponding to all the electrons uh, which run from 1 to n in order to uh, increase the total flux quantum from uh, n m to n m plus 1. So, each one will uh, contribute to this increase and this was the earlier this uh, one on the right psi m is the earlier Laughlin state and we have now this new factor which, which gives rise to this uh, psi uh, m plus 1. Now, quite arbitrarily, uh, but it helps our discussion, we introduce some kind of um, you know origin of the coordinate system, some arbitrary origin of the coordinate system say z 0. Uh, this uh, origin really does not uh, make our discussion any of the discussion to be any weaker than uh, it I mean the present discussion remains as it is. Uh, however, we introduce this in order to understand uh, the electronic density okay, the density of these corresponding to this Laughlin state okay, the electronic density corresponding to the Laughlin state and where would it peak and so on. So, this is an arbitrary origin. Okay. And uh, if we in, uh, include that then uh, of course, uh, we can write down this uh, keeping this arbitrary origin as i uh, to 1 to n and now we uh, do a z i minus a z 0 and again the same wave function that we have written down. Okay. So, it is quite important to see that you see there was an uh, arbitrary origin being selected in the whole problem which uh, in the complex plane which is like x 0 minus i y 0 and um, 
uh, we are shifting all the coordinates of all the particles by that amount uh, which is z i minus z 0 and uh, there are a few conditions on z 0 let us see that. So, uh, it is assumed that the single particle density uh, remains uniform uniform up to a, a distance L b uh, relative to the edge of the disk. Okay. And we are talking about the, uh, the wave function. Uh, so, basically the annular region of the wave function or rather the radius of the uh, wave function. So, now uh, the probability of finding an electron at the origin is missing such that the density within an area L b square about the origin is is almost 0 or let us call it as significantly reduced. Okay. So, uh, what I am trying to say is that uh, you know the density is also uniform within a distance L b from the ring uh, of radius r which is obtained in terms of these uh, L b into root over 2 m. Uh, m being the magnetic quantum number. So, as m changes these uh, radii changes as a square root of m or square root of 2 m. And uh, so, we have introduced an origin here z 0 and the single particle uh, densities they remain um, uniform uh, between you know uh, L b uh, and a uh, distance L b from the edge of the ring. Okay. And that is how we are missing the electron density at the origin rather it is shifted from the origin or rather I mean it is shifted towards the edge of the of the disk. Now, this in standard notations of solid state physics that is missing an electron is, is interpreted as hole. So, let me write that down. Okay. So, that means that we have a hole at the origin because the electron density is missing. So, what happens then? So, when the magnetic field is increased, m flux quanta are added to the system. So, uh, because of that m holes are created in the system. in the system. Okay. So, these are uh, very subtle arguments and they are very important for us to understand that how does the uh, Laughlin state give rise to a fractionally quantized conductivity or the resistivity. So, uh, once we have this the resulting Laughlin state
is given by so that psi m plus 1 z 0 this is equal to product of i equal to 1 to n z i minus z 0 whole to the power m and psi m this is we have written it down earlier and we wrote it again just to make sure that this becomes equal to now this has a z i minus z 0. So, this becomes i equal to 1 to n plus 1 a z i minus z i minus z 0 whole to the power m and uh, you have a minus uh, z i square divided by 4 l b square. Okay? Uh, so, these n plus 1 the plus 1 is coming because there is also a factor similar factor in the psi m which is old uh, Laughlin state before we have increased this flux. Okay? So, uh, it tells you that the resulting Laughlin state it, it sort of corresponds to n plus 1 uh, electrons and hence uh, it has m into n plus 1 instead of m n flux quantum. Okay. So, uh, this addition of uh, an extra electron okay, this extra electron that is being added uh, it compensates for the m added holes. So, added holes in the system this is what we have said. So, this tells you the charge of each hole is uh, let us call it as E h which is charge of a hole is minus E by m okay, where m is the number of added holes in the system. So, now in this Corbino disc ex experiment instead of uh, an electron being pumped from the inner uh, circumference to the outer circumference. Uh, so, a hole which is equivalent to E over m uh, electrons is pumped into the Corbino disc. So, let me write that. So, instead of of an electron I mean we will just put this like one electron what it means uh, there are a, a hole of charge Uh, e over m we are talking about the magnitude is uh, pumped across the disc. Okay? That is instead of one electron there are these uh, E by m uh, charge that is pumped uh, from uh, so this is a hole uh, which has a charge which is E over m is pumped uh, from the inner from this uh, A to B there. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, rerun the same argument that we have done for the Corbino disc. Uh, so, we have uh, the flux is slowly uh, increased from 0 to phi 0 and what we mean by slow is that uh, we know that this uh, T 0 uh, should be much much greater than uh, 1 over omega b uh, with h cross equal to 1 uh, where omega b is equal to uh, you know e b over m. Okay? So, uh, this is uh, the underlying assumption that you thread it slowly so that the electronic wave function it maintains a coherence uh, uh, excepting the transport of one electron from the inner to the outer edge nothing else happens and um, this will give rise to uh, an EMF which is uh, just uh, from this uh, standard electrodynamics it says that it is a del phi 
uh, del t where uh, phi is the flux change and uh, let us just take it as phi 0 to t 0 it is being changed from from 0 to phi 0. So, it is a uh, uh, minus phi 0 by t 0 and um, uh, this will induce a radial current which is equal to uh, say n e h over t 0. Uh, thus, you know this will give rise to a Hall resistivity we will call it rho x y or rho h same as rho h this is equal to e over i r and this is like a phi 0 by t 0 and a t 0 by n e h and this is equal to a minus h over e 1 by uh, n e h. Uh, now, putting E h equal to uh, minus E over m, so one gets a rho h to be equal to h over E square uh, m by n. Uh, so, uh, the whole uh, electron is transferred, whole electron means one electron. one electron is transferred when the flux increases not by just phi 0, but by m phi 0 units. Okay. So, this is the uh, this is the assumption that or rather this is how we reconcile this uh, the fractionally quantized uh, Hall plateaus. Okay. So, uh, this really uh, even the quantum Hall pump thought experiment uh, really uh, explains these fractionally quantized plateaus and the way we go in order to explain um, has been just laid down in front of you. Okay. Um, let me do uh, now the nature of the quantum Hall fluid. And uh, we will give you an analogy to plasma. And um, the analogy is only just to say that there are uh, these charge neutral uh, system and uh, there are some charges and there will be a background charge in order to you know compensate for it. But uh, plasma is usually at very large temperatures when this ionization of the gases occur. However, we are talking about a very low temperature. So, in a way uh, this is not uh, the classical plasma that we are aware of but it has some similarities which is what makes this uh, uh, the quantum Hall fluid very interesting and um, this analogy uh, makes us you know uh, understand the system or these uh, fluid better uh, that there is indeed uh, there is a background which uh, uh, neutralizes the charge. Okay. So, uh, uh, just to understand that let us write down the uh, Laughlin state once again this is that uh, uh, j less than k and then it is going from j 1 to n. Well, I, I believe this is uh, clear. So, it is actually j from 1 to n, but then j is less than k such that at z j minus a z k whole to the power m uh, exponential minus z i square by 4 l b square and uh, m is the quantum number and uh, so this is uh, i equal to 1 to n and uh, this lb is the magnetic length that we have talked about several times and um, this tells you that this is a factor which tries to keep the electrons away and uh, uh, if one electron tries to come on top of another electron there will be the wave function will vanish and uh, this is related to the exclusion principle these are fermionic wave functions and uh, um, importantly this corresponds to a filling uh, which is equal to 1 uh, over m where m is equal to 3, 5, 7 and so on so forth. Okay. These are all uh, known to us and um, 
even though many uh, other fractions are found as I told in experiments, uh, we still rely a lot uh, on the Laughlin states in order to understand the nature of the quantum Hall fluid. Okay? And uh, uh, very importantly, you know, uh, uh, this is a, if you change the z j to z k uh, or back, I mean then you pick up a negative sign and so on. So, what it means is that your psi m. So, I have a z1, zi, zj, zn. Okay? So, this is equal to minus of this z1, zj, zi, zn. Okay? This is what it means. So, this is antisymmetric and there is a property of the fermionic wave function. So, uh, if you do this, uh, it picks up an antisymmetric property. Uh, so, bosons are symmetric. So, if you do that uh, for bosons, they do not pick up any sign and that is the reason that they are written as a, as a determinant uh, called as a Slater determinant and so on. There is another very interesting thing and which has got relevance to our present discussion. If we try to calculate the density, okay, that is um, uh, the probability density which in a quantum mechanical sense is uh, given by the uh, psi m uh, square. So, this is equal to a psi m a z uh, mod square and um, uh, this is equal to we will take. Uh, so, this is like a product uh, j less than k m uh, z j minus z k whole to the power m exponential minus i equal to 1 to n and a z i square by 4 l b square. It is this and then mod square of that. I, I just wrote down the entire thing once again and then take a mod square of that. Okay. Uh, very interestingly, these two terms they behave completely differently uh, if, uh, if we are talking about the density of the quantum Hall fluid. Okay. So, this is called as a Jastrow factor. Let us just uh, name them as a Jastrow factor and let us call them as a Gaussian. Okay. So, Jastrow and Gaussian. So, the Jastrow of course, keeps the fermions away and uh, these Gaussian term actually shrinks as the fermions spread out. Okay. So, one grows as the fermions spread out or they are at larger distances and the other actually shrinks or rather it falls off quickly as the uh, fermions are um, they are at larger distances. So, it is z i square. Okay. So, uh, in this competing scenario how does one ensure uniform density. Okay. And uh, so, this is a very important thing that uh, because the uniform density if it is not there, if there is a variation in density then there are uh, different problems that for, you know from one uh, region of the fluid to another. Uh, then of course, that uh, means a quite complicated thing uh, in any sort of way that this is uh, quite complicated and on top of that uh, such a, a sort of uh, product of two terms in the wave function, they give uh, competing uh, you know a sort of behavior. So, uh, this is where the plasma comes, okay? the analogy to the plasma which we have just said that comes. And, um, let me uh, write down this. So, uh, let us uh, write down this density, uh, let us call it as just a z just to uh, and uh, without any prefactor or anything let us write it as uh, V plasma, where V plasma is uh, this potential of a plasma and beta is in the conventional sense it is equal to the, uh, the 1 over t or 1 over k t uh, that is the inverse of temperature that we are um, aware of. So, this is how we uh, write down the density of the Laughlin states 
and now we will extract out the information of each one of the terms and maybe call them as uh, V1 and V2 or V plasma 1 and plasma 2 and so on and so forth. So, uh, if you we do that then the V plasma actually comes out which is uh, coming from these uh, Jastrow and the Gaussian it is equal to 2 m square uh, j uh, less than k log of z uh, j minus z k and plus m by 2 l b square sum over j for example and uh, z j mod square. So, sometimes we are writing it j sometimes we are writing it i but it means the same thing we are trying to label the electrons uh, the individual electrons. So, this uh, actually coming from the Jastrow factor and this coming from the Gaussian. Okay. Uh, now, if you uh, remember that this is actually the potential uh, in 2D uh, sort of suppose you take a line uh, charge or uh, uh, then the potential at a distance on line charge that comes as a log of this and this term is a mod uh, the coordinate square. So, this log of the coordinate and a mod of the coordinate square. So, these are the two terms. Uh, one can uh, easily identify that beta is equal to 1 over m. So, that uh, the temperature is not a real temperature and just to remind you that uh, plasma uh, really the classical plasma occurs at very large temperature whereas, here we are talking about uh, very low temperature. We have shown the uh, the fractional quantum uh, hall experiments were being held at uh, you know uh, down to uh, less than half a Kelvin okay? uh, that is 0.48 Kelvin and so on. So, ideally about 2, 3 Kelvin or 4 Kelvin and so on. So, the analogy to the plasma as I said that it is uh, because of this uh, uh, making uh, there are classical plasma constitutes of particles that are uh, you know with charge m and with a uniform that is a neutral background and then so uh, sort of the existence at of course, at a very low temperature uh, plasma like state is uh, counterintuitive, but um, here uh, because it sort of will show that it looks like that of a plasma, uh, there is a new state of matter so to say and it is called as a Laughlin uh, state uh, often referred to as a Laughlin state. Okay. So, uh, let us try to understand the V plasma that is the potential due to the plasma. Okay. So, if you remember that uh, the electric field and the potential they are really related by these uh, you know uh, these are the charge uh, for a point charge they are like q r by r square and a phi of r is equal to minus q log r that is the form of the electric field and uh, this electric field uh, obeys an equation which we know that it is called as the um, the Laplace's equation uh, or the Poisson's equation which are like 2 pi q uh, delta 2 r. We are talking about in 2 dimension and delta 2 is nothing but uh, the 2 dimensional Dirac delta function. Okay. So, uh, so, the first term the Jastrow term, so let us call it as a v 1, let us call it as a 1 and a 2. So, the v uh, plasma 1 term this is like a m square probably we are missing a factor we will uh, adjust that uh, j less than k and a minus log of uh, z j minus a z k uh, that is your. Huh. So, this is the, the first term and as I said that uh, we missed a factor of 2 here which uh, one can actually absorb it in the definition of beta. So, uh, instead of beta equal to uh, 1 over m it can be actually 2 over m. Okay. So, this is how uh, one can take care of it. So, this is one term and the second term uh, can be understood if we see that uh, if we take a del square of a term such as z square by 4 equal to 1 over l b square. Okay. <coughs> so, this is that the del square phi equal to uh, you know the 2 pi uh, this thing that we have written down here. So, this this 2 pi q uh, delta square r. 
So, this is equal to nothing but uh, this will give you a rho which is the density in comparison with this term. So, this uh, density so which is written as a q this is the density part this is the density which uh, for a point charge is written as q into a delta function because we are in two dimension we have written it as delta 2 r. The density is written as uh, minus 1 over 2 pi l b square that tells you that uh, the v uh, plasma 2 uh, this is equal to a z square by 4. Okay. Those are the two terms corresponding to the, the quantum Hall fluid which we are trying to visualize as a plasma. So, uh, this term uh, this denotes the energy of m charges interacting with the negative charge density so this also tells you that there's an uh, area an area of uh, 2 pi lb square so this is an area of this it contains one flux quantum namely phi 0 which we know is equal to h over e okay so this makes the background charge density which is there for making it charge neutral the background charge density is b over phi naught uh, which you know that it is equal to density uh, of flux uh, in unit of flux quantum. So, this is the this charge density which is same as the density of flux in the uh, unit of flux quantum of course, this when you multiply b by a the area uh, which is here 2 pi l b square it sort of it gives you a total phi by phi 0. Uh, this is the, the flux density per unit area. Okay. So, uh, the last question that we have is that you know this Laughlin wave function uh, explains a lot of things about fractional quantum Hall effect. Uh, so, one needs to understand it very well, one needs to understand its properties and so on. So, there are many ideas that have been you know simply thrown down and uh, in order to explain a lot of a lot of things that are um, important in the context uh, such as understanding the quantization of the plateaus to be uh, you know not at uh, integer values, but at fractional values. Uh, then these are they have to have this basic property of uh, not allowing two electrons to sit one top of another. Uh, they have to have this uh, property of the harmonic oscillators, the Gaussian of the harmonic oscillator. This is quite important because uh, the energy levels really come out as uh, n plus half h cross omega. Okay. N denotes the quantum number corresponding to the energy and uh, m uh, which is uh, the quantum number corresponding to the z component of the angular momentum uh, that uh, gives us the degeneracy. And uh, we have seen that it can running through a sort of familiar uh, this Corbino disk argument. We have shown that um, uh, one uh, sort of electron is transferred when uh, not uh, one flux quantum rather uh, m flux quantum uh, moves from the inner edge to the outer edge and that would give rise to plateaus. Uh, at fractional values where m uh, is an odd integer um, we are excluding 1 for obvious reasons. I mean uh, the, the plateaus are seen at uh, if m is 1 then of course, uh, it, it does not give you a, a fraction which is uh, with an odd denominator. Uh, so, uh, all these uh, things they are being nicely explained and if you want to ask this question that how good are they. And uh, then uh, then numerical work being done. Uh, so, let me write down the question how good 
are the Laughlin states. Okay. So, people have done numerical calculation on few particles okay, on a number of potential which include 1 over r, which include minus log r, which include exponential minus is r square by 2 and so on and they have found more than 99 percent overlap uh, with the ground state energy, which means that the Laughlin state is very robust, uh, very correct and so on. And remember that he wrote it down based on uh, symmetry arguments, based on uh, really you know uh, the understanding of the problem without uh, having to solve very complicated um, uh, equations, Schrodinger equations and many particle equations and so on. So, it is indeed a very good approximation to the to the actual state because of this you know um, the numerical values have uh, confirmed. So, we just write almost perfect overlap. Okay, so uh, we are uh, almost nearing the uh, discussion of to the completion of this uh, fractional quantum Hall effect. Uh, we will do one more uh, thing uh, to end uh, this discussion on this uh, not only fractional quantum Hall effect, but also uh, the course on quantum Hall uh, effects. Let me give you a half a minute explanation that uh, why is this quantum Hall effects. In fact, it should be just quantum Hall effect. But however, there are uh, these uh, spin Hall effect and uh, uh, etcetera and then there are these anomalous Hall effect, quantum Hall effect uh, which is uh, without really requiring to have uh, an external magnetic field uh, that is why and then discussion actually continues and that is why this S uh, has come into the picture. But I hope the uh, idea is clear, uh, this are really um, things that uh, one should uh, read a lot of literature in order to uh, have a, a good understanding of what is happening, why are there fractionally quantized plateaus. Once you understand that there are a very nice explanations of uh, integer quantum Hall effect uh, that is uh, plateaus occurring at you know h by n e square where n is an integer then uh, going over to uh, this n not being an integer and it is a, a, a fraction uh, that requires one to understand that really the interaction between the electrons which is a, a many body interaction that we are talking about it is not just it is a pairwise interaction of course between two electrons taking place, but in the bath of many particles. Okay. So, these two particles are interacting in the uh, and each particle is interacting with another particle and uh, taking into account this trying to solve some equations would have been uh, only a task that can be done by uh, very uh, large and powerful computers which is what uh, we are showing you that for a few particles taking you know wave functions or rather these potentials to have different forms. Uh, the Landau states or the Laughlin states are uh, being confirmed uh, to have a very good uh, overlap with what is going on in the system. And um, so, it is the nature of the state is that of a plasma say a quantum plasma um, which occurs at very low temperature. So, there are these charges that are moving around and um, these charges are um, in a background of other kind of or other uh, sign of charges so that there is a overall charge neutrality that exists in the system and this is what uh, has been discussed so far. Mm -hmm.